Well, that was fun. How's everybody doing? Oh, come on, you can do better than that. How's everybody doing? Woo! Good job, good job. All right, I have a question for you. How many of you would be comfortable standing on something two feet tall? Show of hands. All right, pretty much everybody. All right, how many of you would feel comfortable standing on something four feet tall? Okay, a lot of people. How many of you feel comfortable standing on the edge of something eight feet tall? Still, still quite a few people. Got some brave souls out there. How many of you feel comfortable standing on the edge of something that is 25 feet tall? A lot of hands went down. <laughs> I got another one for you. How many of you would feel comfortable standing on the edge of something 50 feet tall? Oh, we still have some brave souls out there. I like this. Very good. All right. How about 50 feet in the air on a BMX bicycle, upside down with no hands? That's a different story, right? Will one of these three guys add another one here tonight, or will we see somebody else standing on the tallest spot of the podium here at GoPro BMX Big Air? Well, we're going to find out more here soon. We're early in this competition still, but Chad put down a run that could win it. But these guys all have something to say about it. Now, my name is Kevin Robinson. My nickname is K-Rob. I am a 25-year professional BMX freestyle rider. Now, the result doesn't always end up the way I want it to. I'm an East Providence native, born right here in Rhode Island, youngest of seven children. I have three beautiful children of my own, also with my wife, who is an amazing, amazing counterpart for me. And like I said, my whole life has been spent outside of my comfort zone, being in that uncomfortable spot. We're going to find out more here soon. We're early in this competition still, but Chad put down a run that could win it. But these guys all have something to say about it. Harsh impact. Yo. Uh -oh, he's so hot. Full extension. It was so hot. You know, full extension. And when you over rotate, you know, and land that low. It's now, was that an uncomfortable zone for me? Absolutely. And I've spent a lot of my career in that same position. Now, I didn't set out to start off riding bikes and, doing, and making that my career. From the first time I learned how to ride a bicycle, when I was a little kid, the first time I got on my bike and I put my hands on those grips, I fell in love with my bicycle. I loved being on my bicycle. I wanted my bike in my life for the rest of my life. I loved the ability of being able to control this machine and ma manipulate it and make it do whatever I wanted it to do. Like I said, I didn't set out to start off, to make it a career. There was no such thing as X Games back then. There was none of that. And a lot of the people that I said that to, that I wanted to ride a bike, they said, oh, it's a waste of time, or, you know, why don't you play a real sport? Or, you know, when I got into high school, I was like, get a car, come to a party. And I always just wanted to be on my bike. <laughs> you know, and when, and, when I, and when I got my car, the first thing I bought was a bike rack. <laughs> you know, so, and my guidance counselor in high school, and I had my, you know, my junior year, the big talk about what you're going to do in the future. And I told him, I want to ride my bike. And he said, riding your bike is a waste of time. Why don't you follow this path? Now, why do we do that? Why did he say that? It's because it's uncomfortable to him. He's not comfortable with the thought of that. It's something he knows nothing about. So his immediate reaction is to dismiss it. No, you've got to go to college and do this and do this and follow this path. I've worked from the time I was eight, year, eight years old, had a paper route. Worked for my oldest brother, learned how to do upholstery, sewing, still love doing it. Never thought, never even thought about bike riding as being my career. But he said that because it was uncomfortable to him. And we grew up that way. We're, we're told by our parents, by our teachers, don't do this, don't do that, you have to do this, you have to follow this. Right down to don't touch the stove, the stove is hot. And when do you learn to not touch the stove? When you touch the stove. You learn by trial, trial and error, and to keep pushing through that. Now, that's a fun place to be. What is your uncomfortable zone? Think about that. What are some of your uncomfortable zones? And it can be something small to something big, like changing your career. There's people out there that aren't happy in their job, but you see it all the time. You walk into a store or a restaurant or a business, and that person just has this slum look on their face. And if they're not happy, then why are you doing it? We've got one shot at this life journey. 
One, one time we get to go around this life journey. It's not a race. There's no finish line. It could be changing a job and taking that step. It could be moving to a different state, to a different country. It could be starting a family. It could be getting married. It could be changing relationships. We stay in those things because we're so uncomfortable to take that chance. And why? It's over fear. The number one fear in humans is fear of failure. The fear of failing. I embrace failure. I fail all the time, and I'm proud of it. Because that's how I learn. I learn from my failures. I learn from my setbacks and my mistakes. That's how we push through all the time. And you do it one step at a time. It's not going to be, it's like the person that says they're going to go on a, they're going to get in shape. They're going to go on a diet and I'm going to start working out every day and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then within a week, they're done. 99% of the people that do that, they fail. They stop. Because you're setting too big of a goal. Start off small. There's no better place to start than the beginning. So start by maybe putting down that one dessert. Do 10 push-ups in your living room. And slowly build up to it. Now, there's this trick that I did. And I remember I was a young teenager. And I just had there's this one trick that scared me. It was a trick on the ground before I started riding ramps. And this trick really scared me. Being able, having to jump over the bike. It's called a decade, where I stop and jump over the bicycle. And it scared me. I'm actually going to show you the decade. All right. I got I to gotta, I gotta try that again. Slip my pedal a little. There we go. Now, that was a defining moment in my life. It really was. Because at that moment, I learned how to cross the fear barrier, regardless of the consequences, regardless of what was going to happen. I wanted to achieve that goal that I set for myself. And it was those small steps. And I never knew that that day would lead me down a path to a 25-year successful career as a BMX freestyle bike rider. My little bicycle, that little thing right there, has taken me to 30 countries. I've walked red carpets in Hollywood. I've been in homeless shelters in Thailand holding kids. I've been to St. Jude's Hospital a number of times for special Christmas events. I've been nominated for an SP award, nominated for best cameo in a country video. <laughs> I actually sing country music, weird enough. Life's all about balance. A black belt in Taekwondo, personal trainer. All these achievements, all because of that little bicycle. We live in the most amazing country there is. We live in the United States of America. You can ride a little kid's bike for a living. Pretty awesome. <laughs> You can be a doctor and save, people li save people's lives. You can throw a football and get paid ridiculous amounts of money. But you have to keep pushing through. You have to keep trying. You know, I've had over 120 podium finishes. I've got 10 X Games medals, five gold medals. I've had a lot of achievements. And the three questions that I get asked the most, can you make money doing that? Do you ever get hurt? And do you know Tony Hawk? <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. And, and people ask me all the time, do you, do you get scared? And some people think, oh, he must be crazy. He's got to be crazy. You know, I just did an interview with New York Magazine about a week ago. And she said, Yo, you're, you must be an adrenaline junkie. I am the furthest thing from adrenaline junkie. Adrenaline junkie to me is somebody that that sets out to just throw themselves out any thought, any thought process about what they're doing, just to seek that thrill, that thrill feeling. Everything I've done my entire life has been calculated, a thought process through every moment. I've been very analytical about every step that I take. I embrace the setbacks. Am I scared? Yeah, sometimes I'm really scared. 
especially if I have had an injury and I'm coming back from that injury, it's scary. But the achievement of pushing through that fear to earn what you love, to find that passion inside, it's part of our DNA. When you can find the purpose why you're here, and you can search that out in your DNA and find that. That's who we are. People have said, when you have kids, you're going you're gonna to stop doing that, right? Because it's so dangerous. I can't just stop. That's like, that's like me stopping to go to the bathroom. I can't. It's who I am. It's part of my DNA. Now, I've had 45 orthopedic surgeries. I've, I've broken 22 bones. I had a hip replacement just about three years ago. I feel fantastic. Who is it to say that we can't keep going on, that we can't keep pushing through? You know, people get a hip replacement, and all of a sudden now they're handicapped. Why? You just got it fixed. <laughs> How are you handicapped? You're ready to start over and go again. Now, how do we get through that fear? And you all have to ask yourself that. How do we get through that fear? By one step at a time and starting at the beginning. You have to find your fun. You've got to find your fun in life. You know, I've lost some friends at a young age. And they lived more in their lives, they were alive, than most people dream of. Because they found their fun. Find your fun. We're actually going to find our fun right now. I'm going to do a fun little experiment here. I've got two pre-picked volunteers for, for time, time restraints, but I want to ask the two volunteers to come on up. Thanks, sir. You're welcome. And you might not be able to tell, but this is my big brother. <laughs> All right, come over here. I want you guys, Scott, I want you to lay down right here, feet towards me. Okay, Ken, lay down right next to him. Okay, and scooch together. All right, stay right there. Whatever you do, do not move. Don't sit up and don't lift your legs up. We're going to go outside of our comfort zone. Are you ready? Well, I'm glad you are. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. We're going to try to jump over him. Let's see if we can do this. We don't have a ramp. We don't have a ramp, but we have an imagination. Give it up for my volunteers. One more time for my brave souls. Now, about 10 years ago, I met my ultimate match. So I had this trick, this trick that I kept dreaming about. It, was just, it started off as this little imagination, this little tickle inside. It's called a double flare. So it's two backflips with a half twist. No one had ever done anything like this. But I just became fixated on it. I'd lay there sleepless nights, just laying there awake, just my mind racing. It, came, it became a part of my inside. Like every time I thought anything about it, I just had this thing building up inside that I had to do this trick. I became obsessed with it. And the more that I told people about it, and the more they told me it couldn't be done, it was impossible, the more I wanted to do it. The same as the guidance concert, telling me that riding my bike was a waste of time. But I knew that this trick could happen. This is X Games 12. There's Kevin Robinson signing Why you guys check These fans out. are all full of energy because they know this could be a history-making moment right here on the vert ramp. This has been three years in the making. Jimmy, I have goosebumps right now. This is such a crazy trick. Here we go. Apparently he took the body armor off. I saw him padding up with it earlier, but apparently he took it off. Oh! Yeah! That's the first time he's ever made that. First time in the history of the sport. That is a double flare. And I cannot think of a better place for him to pull that off than right here at X Games 12. 
Hoffman jumping on top of that pile. Matt was the first one to do the flare in 1989. Robinson, who actually rides for Matt's company, right, doubling so it out. John White side. Kevin cannot believe he just did that. Doesn't get any happier. Now, that moment is what we live for. That moment right there, that is what we live for. The minute I felt my tires hit the ramp, the minute I knew that I was riding away, there's no amount of money, there's no trophy, there's no award that can take the place, no award that can take a place at that moment. Other than the birth of my kids and marrying my wife, this is one of the best moments in my life. Three years, three years of pushing myself through countless injuries trying that trick. And people tell me I couldn't. There's no way. It's impossible. Nothing is impossible. And I'm doing this my way, just like you should do it your way. I'm living my life the way I know I should. You know, it's like I retired from competition two years ago. Now I commentate for X Games. I put down the bike and picked up a mic. A little safer. But in that time, I started the K-Rob Foundation, my nonprofit foundation. We help kids stay involved in athletics. Been up and running now for six years. I started speaking at schools. I go around traveling, speaking at schools, talking about character building and anti-bullying, K-Rob BMX school assemblies. All these things. And what's even more exciting, August 13th, this summer, right here in Providence, Rhode Island, Kennedy Plaza, I'm breaking the distance backflip record. I'm going to backflip 120 feet on my bicycle. Now, people say, oh, you can't do that. That's impossible. What is he doing? Riding my bike is a waste of time, right? It's up to me to decide when I should and shouldn't do anything. This is my life. This is my journey. You're on your journey. Don't live your journey according to somebody else's. Go out there and find your fun. Find your purpose. Just have a good time doing it. If there's something that you want to do, go out and get it. This is your chance. This is the chance for you to do this. And I want everybody in here, not to start tomorrow, not to start next week, but to start today, right now. Start thinking about that. I thank you all so much. And as the great Frank Sinatra said, I did it my way. Thank you very much. You guys have a great day.